St. John Bosco was an Italian Catholic priest, teacher and writer who lived in 19th century Turin. He's best known for his work in educating the youth and for founding a congregation inspired by the spirituality of St. Francis de Sales, the Salesians. If you travel to the Valdocco neighborhood in Turin, you'll find his home and the place where the Salesian mission was born. That's where we go today, to the Museo Casa Don Bosco in Turin, Italy. In the beginning, there was love, faith, and great foresight. In the beginning, there was the light that shone upon a shed. A shed that became a house, a home that gave rise to dreams, emotions, smiles, where the future would be written. And today, this home has come down to us. So let us close our eyes and look. We will see youngsters picking up stones from the river and setting them into the refractory wall, partly as a game and partly to do their little bit. We will see them fill the corridors with joy while Mama Margaret is trying to cook, clean and care for them all. We will see Don Bosco under the colonnade where he gave the good night, a final thought for the day for his boys. We will see him writing and praying in his room. We will see him giving a future to his youngsters, teaching them a trade, always in the vanguard of things. Imagining the Silesians with his first collaborators, we will see him loved in life and mourned at his death. We will see faith devotion. We will touch this with our hands in the iconography, the objects, the donations. And we will see the time of Don Bosco, the 1800s, a time of conflict and change, but also of art, new technologies, like photography. Here, from among these walls, the congregation and the great Silesian family went out to the whole world. This house and home is a journey amid faith and art, life and history, love and light. An ever-living light as providence that surprises one So let us open our eyes to this light and enter. Welcome to the origins. Welcome to Casa Don Bosco. Il Museo Casa Don Bosco è collocato all'interno di Valdocco. Valdocco a sua volta si trova in un quartiere multietnico di Torino, a due passi da Porta Palazzo. Casa Don Bosco Museum is first of all a casa, it's a home, the very first home that Don Bosco opened up to so many needy people, young people with his mother, and the first collaborators who joined him in this mission to the most underserved youth. Racconta e incarna perfettamente i luoghi in cui è vissuto un santo, San Giovanni Bosco, i cortili, i porticati, i refettori, le sue camere. Racconta e descrive le scuole, i laboratori, tutto quanto ha riguardato la vita di Don Bosco qui a Valdocco. Today it is a museum that keeps alive that legacy in a very vibrant way, a museum that engages with culture that engages with people of the Catholic faith or of no faith who wish to know something more about Don Bosco's mission and about the way his dream has been realized all over the world. Don Bosco è un santo italiano del 1800 che è diventato famoso per l'educazione. In un secolo in cui ci sono sconvolgimenti, si cerca di risolvere il problema con le guerre, Don Bosco dice no, non è questo il modo, ma è attraverso l'educazione che il mondo si cambia. E parte dai più piccoli, e parte dai più giovani.
Soon after his ordination, St. John Bosco rented the ramshackle Pinardi Shed in Valdocco, on the outskirts of Turin. With his mother, Margaret, he began to offer young orphans a home, a school, a playground, and a church. It was just an empty field, really in what the Pope would call today the existential peripheries of Turin. On the ground floor, there's a lovely statue of Mama Margaret that is on the spot where she had established her, her vegetable garden. That statue is there to commemorate precisely the first boy that they welcomed into the house. A young lad who appears on a rainy night in May, afraid, shivering, cold. I have nobody, I am nobody, I have no money, I don't know what to do, I'm afraid. And he cries. And she says, well, you come inside and stay with us tonight, and tomorrow the God of Providence will provide and show us what we need to do. And thus began the residency experience in Valdocco. Museo Casa Don Bosco è casa, è famiglia, è relazioni e questo lo capiamo bene innanzitutto dalla presenza del cortile. Quasi mai ci riflettiamo sul fatto che il cortile sia un luogo in cui una persona viene abbracciata. Il cortile ti, ti stringe, ti abbraccia come fosse davvero casa tua. Quindi il senso di famiglia, di famiglia salesiana, lo avvertiamo immediatamente una volta entrati nel cortile. Lo riviviamo attraverso la presenza dei porticati che ci permettono una protezione non solo dalla pioggia, pur restando però fuori, all'aperto. Carisma salesiano è un carisma educativo che si basa sul sistema preventivo, che è un sistema in cui i salesiani cercano di far vedere ai giovani come li vogliono bene, quindi un amore che sia non solamente dato, ma che sia anche riconosciuto. For Don Bosco, Loving young people was not enough. They had to know that they were loved. This spirit of Valdocco is alive today in the work of the Salesians worldwide. It is captured in the museum's logo, which is composed of four symbols, each one conveying the focus of each floor of the museum. And so the ground level of the museum is a clay tile, the orange square that you see. That represents ordinary life, the events of everyday living on the ground, the courtyard, the playing fields, the portico, the good night cathedra from which Don Bosco spoke, the grounds where the kids ran around and learned and went to school. The ground floor also includes the area outside the museum. Around the museum there are two schools, a middle school for academics and then we have a school of culinary arts and so we have this broad spectrum of services to reach a broad scope of children with different educational needs. We have a restaurant, we have a snack bar on the premises, we have a bookstore right on the premises. And there are also three churches, all built by Don Bosco within a 25-year period. First, the Penardi Chapel, the very first place he established here on Easter Sunday, 1846. Six years later, because of the increasing number of boys at the center, he builds the Church of St. Francis de Sales. That becomes the center of prayer for the oratory, where the boys went to daily mass with Don Bosco before they went to class, where Don Bosco preached, where his successor, Michael Rua, celebrated his first mass, where Domenico Savio had his mystical experience before the tabernacle behind the altar. With the construction of the Church of St. Francis de Sales, the original Pinardi Chapel was repurposed. The Pinardi Chapel became, first of all, a study hall, and Dominic Savio studied there. Then it became a dormitory for the boys. Eventually it became a dining room for the Salesians. In 1863, Don Bosco realizes even that church has become too small, and he starts to build what is now the Basilica, of Mary Help of Christians, a project that was five years in the making. So on the premises, we have three saints, obviously St. John Bosco, St. Mary Domenica Mozzarello, with whom he founded the Salesian Sisters, and then St. Dominic Savio himself, sort of the proof in the pudding that Don Bosco's method and means of education is conducive to holiness. 
And we have young Dominic as living proof, we can say, living proof from heaven of the way Don Bosco's way of accompanying youth helps people to become saints. È interessante però la santità di Don Bosco perché non si dice mai San Giovanni Bosco, si chiama Don Bosco, proprio per dire il suo essere semplice, il suo essere accanto alla gente, specialmente ai ragazzi. Diventa santo perché ha scommesso sull'educazione per far scoprire ai giovani, i più soli, abbandonati, che Dio voleva loro bene. When pilgrims or visitors arrive at the Casa Don Bosco, they have many options. The museum staff will tailor the visits according to the interests of those who come. The welcoming reception area of the museum is what was Don Bosco's uh, first bookbinding shop because he was all about teaching the children the trades. There's a, there's a wonderful exhibit of the various trades he taught the boys. Shoemaking, tailoring, carpentry, uh, typesetting, bookbinding, eventually even photography. All of this so that the boys could enter the workforce with dignity and not be exploited. Una volta entrati in questi spazi, incontriamo proprio nella sala accoglienza delle figure che hanno rappresentato la famiglia di Don Bosco. Borel, di nuovo Mamma Margherita, Cagliero che tanto farà poi con le missioni. Next on the logo is the blue hourglass, the symbol for the rooms in the basement. The hourglass evokes the passage of time because the underground rooms are the oldest in the house, excavated by Don Bosco in 1853. The color blue honors Mary, who was Don Bosco's inspiration, teacher, and guide. In these rooms, we find two permanent collections of Marian art. Underground, there's also the original kitchen, which is where I am right now. And then the first dining room for the boys with its characteristic stone and brick wall, which the boys actually carried with them from the river nearby to build. So it's a very evocative piece that sees the centrality of the young people in the building up concretely of the oratory. One of my favorite exhibits here is this urn that was used for Don Bosco's beatification and canonization. Notice how it is supported by these rocks from the Dora River. These rocks are special because the oratory boys gathered them and brought them here to help to build this house. Used to support this urn, they signify that Don Bosco's holiness is founded on his relationship with young people his fatherly love for them and their filial love for him. Taking care of young people is a love that elevates us to holiness because it is an expression of the greater love of God for us and our love for God. Beyond it, underneath Don Bosco's bedroom, we have the wine cellar. Don Bosco made wine and shared it with his boys and gave his best wine as a gift to his benefactors. And then at the other end of the building, we have what was the uh, dining room for the artisans, the older students. It was also the first Salesian theater because when they weren't eating, they were having plays and little uh, academia to have fun. The renovation project for the new Casa Don Bosco began in 2018. The goal was to preserve and restore as much of the original structure as possible. Le mura, le volte, tutto è stato ripreso, ripulito, ma nulla è stato cambiato o stravolto. Questo proprio nel rispetto dei principi non solo del restauro, ma del luogo in cui il museo è accolto, quindi Casa Don Bosco. Abbiamo quindi valorizzato tutti gli ambienti delle origini dell'oratorio, la cucina con la dispensa, e il pozzo e il luogo in cui con molta probabilità venivano preparate le pietanze per i ragazzi. Abbiamo ripreso e ripulito 
pavimento la cantina con il pavimento originale in cotto così come le volte e le aperture che servivano per ehm, far arrivare proprio nella cantina l'uva che veniva pestata per la produzione del vino. If we go up then to the second floor, the symbol is the purple box. It looks like a triangle. That could be uh, a bishop's mitre because the purple evokes Saint Francis de Sales bishop, whose spirituality of his Salesianity from which Don Bosco drew is kind of the pervasive theme of that floor. On the second floor, you will find the youth ministry room. The main focus here is a collection of paintings that present three charismatic dreams of Don Bosco. La storia di Don Bosco è una storia veramente grande, una storia molto bella, affascinante. Dietro di me si può vedere che questa storia parte da un sogno. I lupi, che sono i ragazzi difficili, i ragazzi della strada che devono diventare agnelli. In che modo? Attraverso la amorevolezza, attraverso la dolcezza. E qui tutto il richiamo a San Francesco di Sales. Ecco perché noi ci chiamiamo Salesiani. And there was this period of about a year and a half where he was wandering around trying to find a permanent home for the boys. And the Blessed Mother appears again to him, and that's the central panel. We call it the Field of Dreams, where she assures Don Bosco, don't worry, your boys will find a home in the courtyard with all the porticos. And he has no clue what that means, but it was a foretelling of what he would build. And she shows to him the place where the Church of Francis de Sales would be. And she indicates with her foot where the three martyrs of Rome were slain and where uh, the basilica would eventually be. The final dream occurs when Don Bosco is older, 1886, and it's the great missionary dream where he understands that his mission has to go beyond, Valdocco has to go beyond Italy, and the Blessed Mother reveals to him that his mission will reach from Valparaiso in South America all the way to Peking in China. And she said if you draw a line between the two cities, anywhere you hit land, there will be a Salesian house. In that room, we also have some very precious documents. The handwritten manuscript where Don Bosco tells that dream, the first three booklets of what would become the memoirs of the oratory, a document he didn't want to write, which he did purely out of obedience to Pope Pius IX, and that's all. Ci siamo trovati di fronte immediatamente a migliaia di oggetti conservati in parte in quello che era il Museo Mariano collocato nel sottobasilica Maria Ausiliatrice, un'altra parte quindi i calici eh, originali utilizzati da Don Bosco, donato da Cafasso ad esempio, bellissimo calice decorato con pietre preziose, cosiddetto calice Guglielminetti. The final symbol and the logo represents the third floor of the museum. It is a golden circle representing the holiness of Don Bosco. On this floor, we find the spiritual heart of the museum, the bedrooms where Don Bosco lived for 34 years and the room where he passed into eternity. There's the first room that he moved into in 1853, where today we have two precious documents that record for us the charismatic founding of the congregation in 1854 when the first four young boys of the oratory, teenagers, resolved to stay with Don Bosco. And Michael Rua, as a teenager, records that event on January 26, 1854. We met in the, in the room of, of Signor Don Bosco and we resolved to live together an experience of fraternal charity and we called ourselves Salesian, the first time they were called Salesians. In that room, the congregation was founded. In that room, Mike Lua took his first vows. In the room behind that one, for 25 years, Don Bosco lived. We see the bed where he slept, very little because he worked most nights, but the room where in which bed he had his dreams. We see the desk where he wrote so many of the foundational documents for the Salesians, for the Salesian sisters organized, set up with the furniture that he had at the time based on the historical documents we have to recreate the room as it was. Beside that room, we have the one where he died. In December of 87, he was moved to another room. He needed two beds to be shifted from one bed to another to avoid bed sores. 
And so we have the room where he passed away. And the display is quite evocative. His priestly clothing is laid out there as if sleeping, as if to say he is sleeping the sleep of faith. On the third floor, we witness the fruits of Don Bosco's holiness, the extended Salesian family with its 32 branches. These everyday faith heroes have carried the spirit of Valdocco from Italy to 134 countries around the world. They represent every vocation in the church, single, married, lay, consecrated, missionary, deacons, priests, and bishops. Abbiamo in una sala dedicata alle missioni salesiane proprio il mappamondo che era presente nella camera di Don Bosco. Abbiamo il registro con tutti i nomi dei salesiani che da principio sono partiti alla scoperta, all'incontro delle di culture differenti. Beside the room where Don Bosco lived for 25 years is our new chapel. We call it the Resurrection Chapel. Historically, it was a dormitory. Now it's a chapel. This is the altar that uh, the bishop gave to him to make his last days dignified as a priest. He celebrated his last mass on that altar December 11th, 1887, just a few weeks before he died. It's very powerful when you say mass facing the congregants and you see that altar behind you, recognizing what Don Bosco looked at as you're looking at the people gathered to celebrate the mass he loved so much. Beyond the chapel, we see the original humble wooden tools of Don Bosco's trade, the remains of the pulpit from which he gave his famed good night talks, and the confessional where saints were made. Uh, this is the place where Don Bosco, every evening after the um, evening prayers, uh, was used to speak with his uh, boys and tell them some stories, some little stories, or to tell them his dreams, uh, just to leave to his guys uh, a good message before they went to sleep. If you look at this object, it might look uh, an, just an old piece of wood, but it's not. It became, uh, in, during the years, a tradition for all the Salesian uh, churches youth centers and oratories, because uh, every evening uh, in all these Salesian centers, it's used to have the good night message, remembering what Don Bosco used to do with his boys. And then we see the place where saints were made, the place where Don Bosco spent hours confessing the boys of the oratory, a very simple wooden confessional that used to be in the church of St. Francis de Sales, where he would spend three hours at a time confessing the boys. This is the place where saints were made. 13 saints, blessed and venerables, went through Valdocco. And there's a whole room dedicated to them at the Casa Don Bosco. As well as the permanent exhibits, the museum also features many temporary ones. Il prossimo anno eh, è l'anno dedicato al quarto centenario della morte di San Francesco di Sales. Avremo quindi una mostra dedicata al santo che durerà un intero anno. E stanno convergendo già nell'organizzazione di questa mostra diversi oggetti, anche personali, alcuni abiti indossati da San Francesco di Sales che noi avremo modo di esporre in mostra e che ci permetteranno di raccontare la figura di questo santo non solo dal punto di vista salesiano di Don Bosco ma davvero la figura di un santo del suo tempo, del Seicento e tutte le innovazioni che a suo modo lui ha, ha dato vita. Another temporary exhibit is dedicated to Father Paul Albera Don Bosco's second successor. It is called The World Through His Eyes. È una figura veramente veramente straordinaria che ha creato orfanotrofi durante la prima guerra mondiale, ospitando e accogliendo bambini di ogni nazione. And to stay faithful to Don Bosco's educational legacy, 
Casa Don Bosco offers various educational projects and workshops geared at young people and educators. È molto importante questo museo perché è un modo per entrare nel cuore di Don Bosco. Io come ho detto all'inizio sono un suo figlio e mi piace veramente tanto riuscire a entrare nel mondo e nel cuore di mio padre. Quindi è un'opportunità per me, ma soprattutto per molti, per entrare nel cuore di Don Bosco. Il Museo Casa Don Bosco non è solo un museo religioso che racconta il mondo salesiano o un mondo cattolico e basta, è certamente tutto questo, ma è un museo che racconta la storia di questo luogo, ma della città e anche d'Italia. So, the mission of the museum is to keep alive the story that was born around Don Bosco and his first collaborators so that we might carry it forward for so many other young people around the world who still need to know that they are loved, who are still in need of living with hope, with vision, so that they can become protagonists, actors in a society that is really ever more worthy of human beings that make it up, where people are respected, where relationships of trust are central, because that was really the heart of Don Bosco's work, an educational mission built on trusting relationships, a family spirit, all of which sets free that power within to create and to build and to give back for the benefit of others. To visit Casa Don Bosco is more than just to experience the origins of Salesian spirituality and education. It is more than just to explore the places where Don Bosco's dream came to life. It is also to experience the holiness of a man, a father and teacher of the young, who worked tirelessly so that young people could find their own path to holiness. You can visit Museo Casa Don Bosco, where admission is free. Go to museocasadonbosco.org to plan your visit. I'm Mary Rose Bacani Valenti. See you next time as we make more of our faith stories come to life. <laughs>